Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. I am your host Heather and at Lemon Tree Corner we do lots of crafty things including um, a behind the scenes of my studio where I make bags and purses. This week in the studio we are making the Sunshine Crossbody Bag pouch. Uh, so I've made this one before as you can tell. I gave it an A-. minus. I really like it and so we're going to give ourselves a slight break this week and do the crossbody pouch. I think this is the one that has... Yeah, this is the one that has an option. Um, you can add rings to the front and the back to make an adjustable strap. So we're gonna do that because I think it's a good size for a purse. So if we can add that strap to it, um, it's no longer a pouch or a, a clutch, but it's a purse. So we're gonna do that. And this one is by Bagstock Designs. The finished bag is approximately 10 and a half by seven and a half by three. So it's a nice size. And you know, I can't stop thinking about those fabrics that we used on that bag a while ago. So we are gonna go back to this kind of Mediterranean orange fabric with the olive green. And we're gonna go back to the green cork as our accents on the sides and um yeah for the handle I probably have to still use the uh, other fabric because <laughs> handles and cork are a little difficult so I'm looking forward to making that bag and we finished our other shawl we started a new shawl I've been looking at patterns for scarves because I'd really like to make a scarf um if you've been here for a while you know that we tore apart two other projects while we were trying to make the shawls because I didn't have enough yarn. So I'm looking for something to use that yarn for. I've got two skeins of each. One is definitely more of a Halloween fall color scheme, which we don't need to make right now. The other one is kind of a, a black and red one, which could be any time of year. So I might go ahead and start on that and get that going um, before the weather turns warm again and I can't wear a scarf, but pretty much every morning on the way to work, I'm putting on the same scarf, which is a scarf I haven't even made, which is a scarf I bought. So I would like to have something I can wear that's nice and warm. That also is something that I made. So we'll start on that. But this week, we started on the flat iron shawl. So this is where we are at with that. And I had started in a, in a smaller hook size and then I was making it and it just seemed really small. I had gone like into the second ball of yarn already and it was really small. So I started over again in a larger hook size and it just has a little more drape. You can even see it right there. I mean the other one was so tight it was just uh, like it wouldn't move at all. I'm excited to continue working on that and we also have to start putting together our granny squares for our blanket. I looked at the grid and I did make it for a couch blanket so I still have about half the squares to make but we can go ahead and get the, the squares that we have put together to make room for the other squares on the blocking board. Okay so that's about it. Uh, and hopefully because this bag I've made before, the pattern's cut, it's a smaller bag, um, we can go ahead and go through all of our fabric and pick out, uh, pick out fabric for our pencil pouches. So I hope you enjoyed this week and spending time with me. And go ahead and grab yourself a water or a cozy beverage and stay hydrated out there. Okay, let's get to work. Here we are with our sunshine crossbody pouch. Uh, my first question is, am I going to have enough of the lining fabric to do this with or do I need to find another fabric? So that's the first thing we're going to tackle. Um, have my pattern pieces already cut from the last one. This is a very small bag to put together. <clears throat> oh. oh. Well, I didn't do the other half. Well, let's print out the other half and then, yeah, okay. 
Well, I don't like all these folds, so let's go ahead and print out the pattern piece and do that. So I'm going to need enough of the lining to do the two main pieces and the pocket. Um, what's ironic about this is that the outside fabric is only in this little spot. <laughs> so, um, in the back, but it's only in this little triangle section. And this is a pattern by Bagstock Designs. I really love this pattern. Uh, I've only made one before, but it turns out to be a really nice purse. I think I used Decoville Light last time. So we'll probably break that out just because we've got the cork going on. We do really just need a little bit of reinforcing in this center part. So the finish size is seven and a half by, oh, sorry, ten and a half by seven and a half by three. And we just sew these together at the bottom. So no gusset this week. I'm taking it easy on myself. Yeah, I put use Decoville light if using cork or vinyl. So that's what I'm going to do there. So let's get the um, other pattern pieces so I don't have the silly thing on the fold. And then we'll lay this out and see if there's enough of this. Um, I'm thinking there's probably enough of this for the panels, but not for the pockets. Because I believe we have we have an interior pocket and an exterior pocket. So I'm probably going to have enough for that, but maybe not the pocket. So we might need to find a different fabric for the pocket. Okay. Now I don't want to make the handle out of the cork because it's going to be hard to fold over and get through the D-rings and everything. So I might go ahead and use this as the handles just because I have a lot of this and we're not using a lot of it in this pattern. There's a lot less um, exterior fabric going on because we're using the cork. So I think I'll make the handles out of that, which means I had just enough fabric for this guy. So we've got one pocket, two pockets, and then our main lining piece. Just this whole thing here. We're also going to use this to cut the interfacing. So you know me, I SF101 everything. So we're going to cut SF101 for everything. And then um, for the exterior, I'm going to cut two of these in the Decoville so that I have um, some oomph for the exterior of the bag. So basically it's just the lining panels and the two pockets that are going to be out of the um, lining fabric. So I just have little scraps of this left. Now I keep everything for later. Um, I eventually want to make quilts in my free time, like if I retire anytime. Um, I will make quilts and I pretty much keep everything up to like a two inch square. So anything longer than that I will keep and I just have a huge collection at this point of offcuts that we use for stuff like that. Okay, so as you can see not a lot of fabric pieces going on here. Mostly we're going to have these cork accents are going to be the part of this. I'm going to try and cut this out better so that I have the majority of my fabric for this piece that I can use for something. Oh, that's right, the Maya bag. Okay, so I have a Maya wristlet pattern that I really like. I've only made one so far, but I think it looked good with the Rifle Paper Company fabric, and this fabric would actually look really good. Okay, I'm going to set that aside for that. Um, that's something we can use with some of our scraps. As long as our scraps are a little bit bigger, I can make that pattern with it. 
if the scraps aren't really that big, we're going to be using the, um, the pencil pouches with the pieces that aren't that big. So do that. And I think the rain has mostly stopped here, which is good. Oh, I remember now. I didn't even have to do that. This is the front one with the pocket piece. Oh, man. So these are the two pieces that go together. And this is the back that takes care of both of those pieces. Oh, so I really didn't need to cut that one. I only needed one of each of these. So I have now wasted that piece of fabric. Oh, man. We're going to cut one of these down. I remember that now. I thought that looked weird. Okay. So we are going to cut one of these pieces down. And then I remember that because I'm using a wider zipper, this is actually going to be too long. So we're going to cut this off later when we get to that point because my zipper tape is going to make this too tall. Oh, that, that kills me. Oh, what a waste of fabric. Okay, I'll help if I read the directions first. Because there's only that out outside pocket on one of the pieces. All right, now we can go to the cork, which is really easy too, because there's just these two pieces. I'm going to go ahead and iron all of these again since I didn't iron before I started because it's fabric that I had already used before. So I'll iron those. I'll get our strap all evened out and then we'll come back. Okay, so I don't think I showed this last time, but basically we're going to add the foam or the Decoville after we sew the fronts together, the front and the back together. So we have a special pattern piece for that. Uh, it's a special pattern piece if you're using fusible. If you're not, then you're gonna use the lining pattern piece to cut these out. So we're not gonna use these yet. We're gonna start with making the two front panels. So we're gonna get these pieces and our side pieces. And we're going to start with the easy one. And this is basically what we're going to have in the end. So we are going to clip these together. And you want to clip them together overlapping a little bit so that when you turn this right side out again, both of these edges are lining up. Because of the zipper panel, we are going to have to try and force that cork under and do the top stitching under the on top of the cork instead because of this panel. So in this case, we don't get to fudge it. So let me sew this together. Now normally what we would do here is we would take this to the iron and we would press it under and we are not able to do that in this case because we're using the cork. So I'm gonna fold it under, and we gotta fold it the difficult way this time as well. So I'm gonna use my handy dandy seam roller to get that flattened out enough for us to sew it. It just, wanna, it just wants to curl back in on itself. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know why, but I really love these two together. I love the way they look. Um, yeah, just not sure why I love them so much, but I love the way they look together. I think this would also look great with like an olive color cork or a natural cork, but I'm just loving this color. <laughs> okay, so now that we have the back panel done, we can take one of our Decoville panels. Now here's, I made it more difficult for myself, right? Because I'm using the cork and this is iron. You have to like iron this on. So I can't do it from the other direction. I'm gonna have to turn it this way, use a pressing cloth and do it from this side. Now she's given us a smaller piece so that we can stitch outside of the Decoville. I think the Decoville is still a little a little too big for us to do that. Um, and I want to make sure that I do the center part first because you'll see how that kind of bows out a little bit. So I'm going to get my pressing cloth and I'm going to iron it from this side. Okay, so now we're going to do the front pocket. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to mark the center points. Okay, and then we're going to do what we do with every other zipper, which is we are going to put it face down, sew this down, and then put our lining on top, and sew that down. Now, like I said, I'm using a zipper that's a little bit wider than she's using. So we might have to cut part of the bottom down when we get to that point. Okay, so we're gonna go sew this down. Okay, and then we're gonna do our usual and press these two together and top stitch. Okay, and then this is interesting because this is a pocket that's going to be attached up here. We're going to take that pocket panel and put it all the way up here. So that's a little bit different than we're used to. And then the only tricky part about this is making sure that we have it going this way. Okay, and now we want it to have that shape again. We are going to cut off these excess pieces. We no longer need these. I'm going to move my zipper a little further in here. And it's going to be hard to get through the zipper tape. So you just got to ram it, ram it through there. Now we want to be very careful with our zipper head that we don't go over the edge here. Because we have not stitched that down yet. And if we pull too hard, it could just go flying off. Okay, we have our nice clean edges to attach to attach our other two panels. Let's do it correctly this time. So we're going to mark the centers of these. Now this is a little longer, see? See how that's a little longer than it was before? That's because I've used the zipper. <coughs> Now I don't want to cut off any of this because this is already really short. So what I should do is cut this off. And that'll help us with our panels in a minute. I just want to make sure we're not cutting into that uh, edge of our pocket. So this is the pattern piece for the other side, for the back side of the front. So I'm just going to line it up so that it's even with that. And now we can mark the middle. We can just take this piece and fold it in half. I can tell you this is a really nice palette cleanser. This pattern is so much easier than last week's that it's really nice to give yourself a break if you're 
If you're trying new patterns, to go back to one that you've done before, or even just pick an easier pattern. Like this is way easier of a pattern than we had last week. And it's just, it really helps kind of clear your mind and makes it easier to do. We are also gonna make sure that our pocket is nice and folded in half, that there's no, no bunching going on there. So that when we sew it to this, it's going to be flat. Okay, so I double stitched over the zipper here because that's the part that's going to get the most pull. And then we got to do the same thing here. We got to manhandle this. I think it's also a nice bag to use the cork on because you're not using a lot of cork. You're using these four little pieces of cork and you're getting a lot of mileage out of them. So it's kind of a nice way to have the cork accents without like that other bag where you're investing a lot of money in the cork. Um, basically, like a one yard piece of cork costs me like $30, so it's much more expensive than all of the other materials. Same with the, um, the vinyl, it's about that much. So you just have to think about when you're using them like this, you have to think about what that overall cost adds to the bag. So that's one of the reasons why I like this pattern is you get a lot of life out of that. See, even though we did it in half, it's still short up here. But that's okay, that will come out in the wash when we sew our panels together. Okay, so here we have our second panel with our zipper. You'll see that the pocket piece is nice and flat. That's what we wanted. And now we're going to compare it to our first panel. Make sure they're about the same size with that amount we cut off, which they are. I'm wondering if I should just cut them out of this and then redo the strap now that we know I hate to just throw away this strap, but it's t to the point where I can't really tear it apart and add to it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and question is, is that gonna be enough? Yeah, I don't think that's really gonna be long. I thought it was pretty short to begin with. I should have read that a little more carefully. So, how about we get our two and a half inches out of this piece. Two and a half inches just doesn't seem like enough either. I don't understand why. And I didn't make a note last time. So I think we're just gonna use this. I'm gonna cut this at three just because I'm not trusting the pattern now. And we're gonna have to redo our strap at this point. I'll keep this just in case we do wind up doing, if we make the Maya wristlet out of the rest of the fabric, then this can easily be the wristlet strap for that. So I'm gonna hang on to this for future and we'll do that. So these are basically gonna attach to the D-rings like that. You can see that, so those raw edges are gonna be sewn in. And that's the other thing I didn't read on the strap was that we were supposed to fold in the raw edges on the strap the way she wants us to do the strap. So, doing the strap over again is probably going to be a good thing for us. <clears throat> now, I think I did it this way on the first one and I did not like it because it pulls. It just pulls at the whole thing. I think I liked it this way. I was going to try it this way next. It's just, you know, when they're down here, the weight of it on your shoulder is pulling this whole thing up as you're wearing it, which is not good. So I did like that idea better. So we're just
just going to go tack these down to hold them in place. And this is going a lot faster than, I mean, I'm used to. <laughs> so, um, basically at this rate, I think we can spend most of tomorrow going through our leftover fabrics and piecing out like which ones we're going to make which bags with. Um, if I don't have a lot of pieces, they're going to become the pencil pouches because that's the, the smallest thing I have. Um, I have those Metro Zip pouches, but um, I just made those. So I think I'm going to try the Maya wristlets as the next thing that I make with those scraps. Okay. Oh, now here's one where we are going to turn it. We're going to birth the bag through the pocket. So that's interesting. That's different. So we're not going to sew the pocket shut. That's why she had us cut two pieces instead of a folded piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, fold this bottom edge under by a quarter of an inch. That's going to help us later when we go to sew the hole closed. So we're going to do that for both these pieces. And tonight I am making HelloFresh. We are making a turkey chili, which sounds really good. Uh, it's been raining so much here <laughs> and cold, so that, that sounds really good to me. Okay, we are so close to being done, but I want to get my shawl blocked. Um, my husband is out of town this weekend. Uh, he just left to go down to San Diego again. So that means that I've got his office all set up to block my shawl. And I want to get that started because I have to let it dry for 24 hours. So then we will come back and do the final stages of this. Okay, I'll just leave this alone right now. <laughs> so I can get that going and I'll take you with me on that as well. And unlike usual, we are going to seal this whole thing up. But I do still have to make sure that my zipper is unzipped, which I did not do, because we're still gonna have to have our main zipper unzipped in addition to our zipper pocket on the inside. Where is the zipper? Where's the zipper? There's so many little pieces in here. I can't find the zipper. There we go. Okay, so we're going to open that zipper before we sew. And then, yeah, I've, I've done the turning out through the zipper, I mean, through the pocket before in a larger bag. So I'm not sure that little opening is going to be big enough for us, but I guess we shall see. So we're just going to sew this all together. At what are we doing? The usual three, three eighths here. Okay, so three eighths of an inch. Be careful not to sew through the zipper tab when we get up here. So we'll need to feel 
and make sure we're not doing that. We normally show, so this smaller, so she's saying to go from 3 8 to 5 8 for this one. And then we're going to box the bottom. So let's go to the sewing machine and do that. Okay, so I have a 3 8 of an inch and a 5 8 of an inch mark on my machine. So we are going to roll with that here. Can you see? Can you see? Okay, so we're going to do this one with... I think I'm going to sew from there to there. Okay, let's do the bottom first. So we're going to do 3 8 for our main panel here. So what I'd like to do is start from the exterior and move into the lining and then we're going to try and avoid that um, zipper tab. So we're going to do 3 8 all the way up here and then I'm going to feel for my zipper tab and now remember I did a zipper tab on both sides so I think I'm going to have to come in slightly to avoid hitting that zipper tab, we're going to go at an angle, angle this puppy, and then start at 3 8 and go up to 5 8 by the time I get down here. And then we're going to do this whole bottom at 5 8. It's so weird to sew the bottom closed, it's very counterintuitive. Feel like I'm totally messing up. Okay, and then once again we're gonna flip over and go from the exterior to the lining. So on this side, the outside, it's going to be three eighths. Now this is where remember we talked about getting the um, angle right. Ah on this, I'm going to have to pull, pull, pull. I'm going to have to pull this whole thing apart in order to get these sides right and not at an angle. Oh, So this is going to be hard to do, not only with the Peltex, I mean, not only with the Decoville, I'm going to have to stick my hand in there to do this correctly to get this to actually separate the way I want it to. Oh, that's so difficult. Okay. It's so difficult. Now we have to push the whole bag out through the zippers, I mean through the zipper pocket in the middle. This will be interesting, okay. Well, at least it's not foam. Oh, it's just very counterintuitive to try and angle it to come out of the zipper pocket. Plus it's a smaller opening for the zipper pocket, so be gentle. Don't want to rip the whole zipper pocket out here. Just want to slowly, slowly push it through. Now some people do this in every pocket, I mean in every bag, they will turn it through like a zipper pocket instead of the lining so that you don't have that um, seam in the lining, which is pretty cool. There we go. I gotta get the rest of it pushed out here. Oh man.
I think I'm going to break out my chopstick. Get all these corners pushed out correctly. Man. It's like totally manhandling the bag here. Try and get this pushed out. Okay, and then we have to flip our zipper tab there. So our zipper tab is poking out instead of poking in. Ooh, we did a good job with that. So let me use my... Just want to get those corners nice and poked out. And we have our bottom. So that's nice. And then our lining is nice. Yay! So now all we have to do is sew up that hole in the pocket. Don't forget about that. But it's so cute! Just have to get it to kind of stay on that fold. It's also a good purse size. I know I'm 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 in the I'm an exception to the rule that I like smaller purses, but I feel like it's a really good size purse. You know? Oh, this is a little wonky. <laughs> it's going a little downhill. Um, yeah, but I think that's really cute. My bottoms don't quite line up. This one lines up better. But, yeah, that's super cute. Okay, now we just have to sew the hole in the lining. And then we've got to remake our strap. Okay, and you see how... Um, you see how because we already we already ironed that bit in, it's going to be way easier to do now because it's already ironed in. So we're just going to sew this shut with an eighth of an inch. And because it's in the pocket, it's going to be a lot less visible or not visible at all, unlike when we have to sew a hole in the lining. So even though I think this pocket is a little small to do this with, uh, it's a good trick to do this when you're doing like a tote bag or something and you have an interior pocket and you don't want, you know, the larger tote bag lining to show the, the hole that you sewed up. This is a very good way to do it. The perfect summer is over in a flash and you're on your way Somebody near It's open for tonight, it's not too late My mind says yes You've been here for quite some time But my heart tells me you should stay friends, I thought I'd give you a change of scenery for the end of this video. So we are back on the couch and here is our finished bag. It's so cute. It's so cute that I want to keep it for myself. So <laughs> it's got the adjustable strap, which is nice. And um, yeah, I really want to keep it for myself, but I already have the other bag that I messed up that I have to keep for myself in these colors. But this is more of my size of the bag. Um, yeah, I don't know what I want to do with that yet. So we've got the inner pocket and the outer pocket. I don't know that this is big enough to really, yeah, it's not really big enough to put a cell phone in, but it is big enough to put your chapstick or your keys or whatever in there. I think this is a really great size. I had already given it, what did I give it, an aim? An A minus. So I already know that I like this bag and that it's going to be part of the product line. But just making it over again just reaffirmed that this is a really good size for a purse uh, with the adjustable strap. You, it, you can carry it as a shoulder bag. So I think this is definitely one I'm excited to make and put in the shop for future. And it's just like I was talking about a good use of the cork accents without being price prohibitive 
of how much cork that you're using for a project. So, yay! I really like it. And it only took me four and a half hours to make, which is great. So it's the right, the right size, the right price point, and I think it would be something that lots of people could get lots of good use out of. So I'm very excited to put that in my product line and pick out some more fabric to make some more of those with. And speaking of more fabric, next week we're going to be working on two of our used scraps up patterns. So it's going to be the Maya wristlet and the noodle head pencil pouch. So I'm just going to dedicate a whole week to that because I've got a stack of fabric now that I picked out to make with those or to make those with. So we're just going to dedicate a whole week to those two patterns. And yeah, they're really nice, easy ones to use scraps up with. So if you're looking for that, stay tuned for next week. And I'm really glad that you joined me this week. I love having you in the studio with me and spending time with me. So thank you for coming. And I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Love you, friends. Bye.